Hello and welcome to this video. Uh, today I'm going to talk to you about EasyTune Pro and explain what, what it is, what you get in it versus the free EasyTune edition and uh, cover some of the basic EasyTune concepts again. Uh, though there is a, an, a video available on EasyTune if you haven't seen that. Um, but first, quickly to introduce myself. So my name is Bruce Cullen. I am the head of business strategy here at Cookdown um, and a bit about EasyTune. So if you haven't heard of EasyTune before, I strongly advise you to check out the uh, other video um, I've uploaded to YouTube on, on EasyTune. Um, it's basically a free solution to allow you to tune scones uh, overrides rather than having to do it manually one by one, which uh, anyone who's done it before would agree is super painful. Um, there's a, a couple of key concepts you'll need to know for the pro video, um, but again, I strongly recommend you check out the EasyTune free video. <clears throat> So the concepts you'll need to understand before I just dive in are um, the notion of tuning packs and levels. So tuning packs are essentially a big old collection of overrides which are stored in a CSV file. Uh, they contain levels. Uh, the levels themselves are what contain the, the values that you'll be overriding workflows with. Um, it's all stored in CSV and uploaded into SCOM to set overrides, which are saved in management packs by EasyGene. So that's the basic premise. Uh, so now I will dive in. All right. So <clears throat> you'll see on the left hand side, I've got EasyTune installed. Um, for the purposes of this demo, I've got a special bonus uh, version installed that allows me to access the pro features without going through license key activation. Um, so I'm just going to click that and switch to pro mode so you can see what it gets you. The first thing you'll notice from when we switch into pro is you get this additional column here called configuration drift. Let me just make it a bit bigger so you can see what's in it. Um, so in the uh, free edition of EasyTune, uh, I showed you how you could See that config drift um, that's you know in here. Um, we had to go into the tuning pack that had the that had the drift and click on uh, the, the correct level to see the drift. So I went to uh, the Tomcat one and I clicked on the discover discovery only uh, global tuning level. And I had to scroll through this list to see that somewhere in there there was something that was not correct. So this bottom item here. So you get a button here that just filters out everything but the values with drift. Uh, the other thing you'll notice is obviously the column itself tells you whether there's drift or not. So there's no drift at all in one, two, and three. But in this fourth one, there's drift at a global level. You'll get a comma separated list of those drift at uh, the global level, the group level, and the instance level, for example. Uh, the other thing you'll notice is this nice little icon here. This will go green if there's no drift and sort of visually alert you to, to drift, um, which means you don't have to run any reports or click through any data. All the information relating to drift is surfaced. You can see what's going on, which is really, really powerful. The next thing you'll notice is um, you get this extra bonus menu, cheating pack migration actions. Um, so what this allows you to do is to capture um, overrides from a class, a group, or from a specific object. Uh, regardless of whether the overrides were set up using EasyTune or not. So this is super useful if you're migrating between management groups, so let's say you want to roll out 1801 or something, and uh, you know migrate from 2012 R2. But in 2012 R2, there are specific groups that you're happy with the tuning for. You just want to capture that tuning, um, export it, and then import it into your new management group. Um, if you're the SCOM environment was kind of in a good state and following best practices, you'd be able to do this by uh, exporting or copying around the, ma the management packs that contain those overrides. Um, but very often, especially in a long-lived environment, that's not the reality. And even if that is the case, you know, you never know, there might be additional overrides that aren't contained in your ideal management uh, pack, which should contain the overrides, uh, whereas this can pick them up from where wherever they are, which is super awesome, and just export them all to a, a tuning pack. So I'm going to capture uh, a tuning pack from a group. Now I know, just from looking at this UI, uh, whoops, from looking at this UI here, that 
I've configured a tu uh, this tuning for the SQL Server 2012 uh, pack at a group level. So I'm going to capture from that. Obviously, you don't need to have set up the overrides with easy tune for this to work. Um, but I just it's just an easy way for me for me to know. I know that the tuning for that uh, for SQL Server 2012 is targeting our production group, production SQL servers. There it is. Uh, so I'm going to target that group with the wizard and then, then hit next. So the next it will show you which management packs are uh, should be included in the tuning pack. So uh, this there's an override set in SQL Server 2012 and the monitoring and discovery packs. So that's great. Uh, I give my pack a name, BC SQL export, um, something like that. I'm going to give my uh, uh, pack an author and set a description, so production SQL server group from old management group. I specify a location where I want this chili pack to go. So by default, it's the uh, repository, the local repository, effectively for uh, Genie Pack. So I hit Create, and it will go and do its thing and uh, work out what overrides are coming from where. And there we go. CSV is created. BC SQL export. If I open this file, you'll see what we've got. Override source. Overrides custom. Here we go. The column contains the values that are, are set. Uh, these are the places where uh, we've set something as an override and we're exporting those overrides into CSV. Um, you can also see override notes here. So if um, a note was made at the point this override was set, we'd uh, extract that and also the source, So where, which is really quite useful in itself, working out where an override lives, you know, what, what, which management pack basically is, uh, is that override set up in. So all of that's in the CSV. I'm not going to save any changes. So um, you could apply this um, in your new management group by effectively copying and pasting the CSV to it, um, to the EasyTunes local repo there. And then you just um, apply tuning in the same way you would do from these top three options um, with uh, any other tuning pack. It's really that simple. The other thing that's available is the PowerShell SDK. So the PowerShell SDK, I haven't actually got set up here to show you right now. Uh, essentially, anything you could do with the UI as far as setting um, or exporting alerts, you can do from PowerShell. Also, all of the reports um, that summarize the details on, on the on tuning reports, what you see on this screen here, um, can be exported uh, or manipulated via PowerShell. <clears throat> um, there's one additional feature, which is at the moment coming soon, um, but very in the very near term future. Um, will be time of day alerting. So uh, I'm just going to give you a little sort of taste of what that will be, and I'll probably end up re-recording this video when we've actually um, completed the dev work on that one. Um, so at a high level, time of day alerting uh, solves the, the traditional problem of, I want to be notified of X and have an alert when X happens, um, but I don't want that uh, alert to fire when I'm, say, doing a backup or, you know, uh, regular scheduled activities. You might have different alert requirements for the weekend versus weekday, for example. <clears throat> One I heard recently was, um, I have a backup job that runs at 9 p.m. every night. It takes about an hour. Um, whenever that backup job is running, CPU on, on my the box the agent runs on is pegged at 100%. Obviously, I know this is going to happen every night between these hours. I don't want to get alerts from SCON when this happens, uh, especially when you have um, alerts hooked up to say service now, so you might be creating incidents based on those alerts. Time of day alerting will allow you to specify the day, the date, the time, uh, time windows when different tuning sets should apply. And we'll automatically tune SCOM kind of accordingly. Um, so it's a really powerful feature. Uh, it's something that SCOM's kind of needed for a long period of time. Uh, and I'm really looking forward to showing that off when we finish the development work for that. Um, but as I say, I'll, I'll probably uh, record uh, a new version of this pro video uh, when we're when we're kind of ready for that. Um, so that's coming soon. So that's Easy Tune Pro. Um, if you need more information on anything to do with Pro, uh, give our support team a mail support at cookdown.com. Uh, there's also a web form on our website, 
um, which uh, if you're interested in buying it for contacting sales or email sales at cooktown.com uh, and the pricing's up there too so if you want to have a look check that out uh, all right so that's everything i had to show today i hope it's been useful and you've got a flavor of what easy tune pro can do and why um, it's got great value for you, your company uh, especially if you're migrating management group or want to really keep it keep top on drift and very soon time of day alerting all right so thank you very much i hope you'll agree this has got value for you and is an awesome product and we certainly think so until next time thanks very much <laughs>